Hello Wargaming, World of Warships Blitz community. It has been a year, hasn't it? With everything going on in this crazy world over the past year, all I have to say to you is it hasn't been an easy time. I think that's uh, fair to say. So I'm going to be going over many of the events of the past year or so. Going over the good and the not so good. But let's relax, breathe. I want to say you are moving in a better direction than last year. But I feel covering these events, updates, community opinions will help the community and working itself move forward. Grow from this. This is all about helping the game, which we both want to get better. This is not a one-sided thing. We both want this game to get better. This entire video is here because of the passion of the community. I can only hope I can transmit the community's feelings to you in a constructive way so we may move onward and upward with this game. We see so much potential in this game, and I'm betting you do too. And we just want to make sure that everyone's together on that. Take this all as constructive criticism, and if you want to do a response to this or a response video, please. We would love to hear your response to the many points I will be going over. So, do not delay any longer. Let's start the 2021 to 2022 year in review. So for my notes, 2021 summer started off with no new grinds. Not really any good events. Just going to start that off. It's not starting out great, but you know what? Let's, uh, let's talk about the elephant in the room that we all remember from last year. Update 4.4. I feel like I can pretty much skip over this at this time. We already have had plenty of talks about this. No reason to bring it up again other than to note that it happened and let's move on. During that time, we also had boring grinds, boring events, lackluster deals, nothing really great. It was kind of bleak and I want to kind of highlight that right here. Is last year, summer of this game, was uh, not good. It was not looking great. But as we go forward, I'm hoping you notice there is a change in that. Especially Wargaming, I want you to breathe. This might be a little too constructive sometimes, maybe hit too close to the heart. But I just want to let you know, at the end, I'm doing good. Okay? But community... Let's talk about some good and some bad of many things that happened post update 4.4. Let's start with this Anchorage event, the good, the shop. I think this is actually an exemplary version of the shop that we need for events. We should always have multiple ship types and many old premiums if in there, just kind of shove them in there. You're not making any money off them, might as well, right? So have multiple ship types in a new ship event so that people, maybe they don't want a certain ship type and they don't want the new one. They want an older one that happens to be in the shop. Do that. But let's talk about the beginning of a very reoccurring motif in this video. The bad of the Anchorage event. It was absolutely and utterly unobtainable. I made a whole video because of this event, we need to have a Blitz Challenge, Victory Blitz, Metal Bundles, and this entire event should be focused on being a FOMO, Fear of Missing Out event, for players to convert them from non-pain to pain. Crate events are for whales, and Sonar Sweeps are for old ships, and a little bit of luck. Everyone obviously puts a little 50, 100 in there a little bit. I know, I know you do. But ship events with shops are there to turn those customers into paying customers of Wargaming. They are for the players who are playing this game. They're to give a heavy discount during that time. And then, of course, later on, hey, look, it's full price bundle for this ship that if you would have been playing a few weeks ago, you would have got it for cheaper. And that gets people on. That gets people enjoying the game, bringing, coming back into the game for a well-earned discount. So make that happen. It's simple, it's easy, and it's, in my opinion, from what I have been watching from GDC, which is the Game Developer Conference stuff, 
It's how it works. It's how you benefit your community, especially your long-term community. But I digress, and I know this might become another uh, events video, which I'm betting my community doesn't want another one for the third time this year. Stop! <laughs> He's already dead! Halloween. Overall, the event was a rehash of the year before. Let's do better this year. Let's do something brand new, some change up. I know you probably want to do your tier 8 skips again, which is not a bad idea. But, change it up a little bit. Let's do that. But, also, here's a little tip on here. Last year, missing one day made it so players couldn't get a tier 8 skip. That was a lost opportunity on money. That was. You could have thrown a $5 to $10 ketchup bundle for, for certain people. And it's like ketchup, not the condiment. But either way, I digress. <laughs> it's a missed opportunity. You could have made a little bit of money on some, hey, hey, give us five bucks and now you can skip to tier eight because you work so hard on every other day. Because, you know, it's a holiday. You need to respect players' times. And, you know, in reality, five bucks to not have to play for a day, especially on an event that you actually want to do. Not a bad one. Maybe even 10 might even be encouraging for certain people. Let's change it up next, uh, this coming Halloween. Shortly after that, we had a week of matchmaking blunders. And also, I'm going to talk about a little bit more, not just canonically, but uh, recently, the recent bot amounts. So SBM was, SBMM was there for a week. Don't bring that back unless it's in a particular queue, which is skills-based matchmaking. We all felt it. We all knew it was there. You tested it. Don't bring it back. Just straight up don't, please, please. But you know what you can do with the recent bots mounts and everything going on, especially with the summer coming on, with less players going to be on? Do an update that's just about fixing bots. Save the community. Really, it'll teach people to be better with bots that don't Tokyo Drift, that don't turn on a dime. It'll make them better, and also it'll make bots the exact thing that they should be, is just bots to beat down and shoot. Their ads don't. You don't need to keep them alive any longer than they have to be. But don't make them Tokyo Drift where it's like, hey, by the way, yeah, I shot a bot at 11 kilometers and then it literally flipped around. That's not fun. That's not fun at all for the entire community. And I would really suggest just doing a single update just for bots, even if it's a server update, I'm betting it is. But either way, please make it happen. Fix bots. Fix the freaking bots. Now, <laughs> let's talk about something a little, little, little brighter. New staff. We got Bella last year. Great addition. Great success, in my opinion. She really does seem to be listening and seemingly actually getting our voices overall to the right people. It seems like the entire staff is kind of growing. You guys are starting to live stream more, starting to be a little bit more involved in the community, posting up on Reddit and multiple different sources. Moving on from there, from my notes, we've got Black Friday. Amazing. Great work. The ACE daily events got people on, the victory blitz, the even the blitz challenges, all of it combined, gold deals, loved every moment. Do more of these. Obviously, you don't want to do too often with ACE. You know, it does give too good of deals, in my opinion. So it only come around once every twice a year. But, you know, the auctions were a bit okay, but everything else made up for it. You know, the auctions were for the whales anyways, so it doesn't really matter to me. But overall, this was great. The Victory Blitz and Blitz Challenges always keep people playing, engaged, and then, of course, good deals. You know, good ways to use your money to get gold in order to spend it on something. What's not the like? So, great event from that. I think this is the start of some really solid events, in my opinion, within this. Now, we did have the, War the first Warhammer event happen. Not for me. So, the Weimar event happened. Sorry, not for me. It's just, <laughs> this is not for me, but some people like the Weimar and some people like the Warhammer membership. So it's just whatever. Now, Christmas. Oh boy. Amazing. This entire month dripped of good. Great job on that. Christmas was a great success, especially in my opinion. Blitz challenges, respawn, crates, bundles, repulse in the Blitz Pass with lots of keys. More keys, the better, because of course that makes it so players feel like they can hit the crate a few more times and maybe get a little lucky. So it probably helps the bottom line there. But the bad. Uh, drop rates for the Burgania were 0.54 on a 2,000 gold crate. Uh, the one thing actually I can say about this and I'd suggest is actually taking something from the Napoli event, which I'll actually uh, once again reinforce later, is give us a single ultimate crate key for that. Just Give us a chance. I, I feel like that's 
perfectly acceptable and not too crazy on your bottom line. And it gets us into potentially spending more on the crates because we hit it once, you know. But uh, yeah, when you have very low chances to get a ship, uh, give us at least some keys a little bit. Just kind of grease the wheels there, maybe. But yeah, that's... uh. That was, a, that was a little rough. That was probably the, the worst part. But everything else in Christmas time and the entire Blitz Pass during that time, great. So keep that up. Shipyard rotation, early 2022. Pretty good selection. I love ships that are side grades to tech trees in there. It doesn't feel like you're selling something that's overpowered or anything like that. You're just selling different flavor and such. I like that. I also love it when there's unique weird ones, i.e. the Somers and the Colbert. They're just unique ships, and I like that. It's good. Nothing wrong with them. They're, you know, they can be strong in their unique niche, which is perfect. I like that. The only problem with this entire shipyard rotation, uh, Black Monarch, the pricing. Uh, just straight up reimburse anyone who bought it and drop it down to 20 to 25. Seriously, that, that, the Black Monarch is not worth 65 titanium. Don't, please, correct this wrong before the next shipyard rotation. Let us get the Black Monarch when we want to and make it happen. I really do feel that it's way overpriced for a tier 8. It's good. It's not 65, ti 65 titanium good. So, as we move on, update 5.0. Overall, solid. Buffs were actually really good, but nothing really huge. Uh, you're taking your time with your buffs and nerfs. It has its trade-offs in the gaming industry, but, you know, for multiple ships that kind of need those large changes you don't do updates often enough so bigger buffs on certain ships that really desperately need it would be really welcome and such you know the like you know per se uh i know we're talking about 5-0 but for 5-2 you know the rate of uh goliath buffs it might be usable by late 2023 and late 2024 at this rate sorry it's just some ships really do need some love Pietro, line, Goliath line, helping line early. Uh, but we got bugs with the Odin camo, so that happened. Bugs happen, it's fine, but at the same time, not being able to play an entire ship basically for an uh, update or a few weeks. Little rough, little rough. Now there was the can't go to back port bug. Uh, you couldn't, <laughs> couldn't leave a game pretty much. That was a little rough, but you know... Uh, Hey, it happens. There, there are certain things. You did rectify it pretty quickly, so that was very good on you. For update 5.0, I do have to say that the general consensus in the community that I got was, where's the PC port? Where's the upgrading to the latest game engine? You've got Legends coming in right now, and there's dozens of other games that are out there right now that are, in my opinion, way better graphically on my device and I'm at maxed on my phone and I get 60 frames per second, which I do like. It is optimized. World of, World of Warships Blitz is generally pretty well optimized, which I, I do enjoy. But at this time, you have an amazing game loop. We've got summer coming up. We've got a little bit of time. Of course, you can test on us. Maybe you could throw it into a beta on Steam or something like that. But we need more players in this community. It's an aging game. You're getting to around five years of a live service. The original, you know, day one players are leaving just due to general burnout. It's going to happen. So why not refresh the community, bring it back up, and uh, make a PC port? Get more people. Get, you know, you can even go for multi platform support so that basically now you can go, hey, you can play on your phone in between meetings. You know, during that amazing game loop that you have, the six, seven minutes, it's a perfect time for that in between meetings and between classes, everything like that. And then you go home and you're, hey, I want to grind out for the night. I want to play a bunch with my friends. Hit up on Discord. You can now use your entire computer setup and boom, you're on World of Warship Blitz again. So in my opinion, it, I really do believe a PC port should be in question. It should be in the works. If not, really, it should be. I do know a little bit of Unity development and... um not going to say it's easy, but exactly hard either. So hopefully that happens sometime soon. Second ace event, great redo for those who missed it. I think that's that you know that's going to happen. You're going to want to do that occasionally. Wasn't obviously for most players, but hey, guess what? Here's if you missed it, which of course everyone got hyped up for it. That was great. Do you feel you need to bump more than 25 for an entire server because a lot of those things were out like that. 
there was no time to actually get it, and people were lucky to get it. So, uh, just, 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 just a little more wouldn't be, wouldn't be too bad, and like that. But hopefully, next one will be full of mostly new stuff. We are looking forward to that wargaming. So please bring Ace back. French DD Early Access. This is a rewarding event, uh, in my opinion. It was only a victory blitz, but you know, hey, it was rewarding. You got early access to certain ships. I'm okay with that. Yeah, hey pretty easy especially an easy event probably on your side and just hey something for us to do on our side rewarding overall time wise but uh, unfortunately french dds need a little bit of love uh in my opinion they are a straight up speed meme but they're not really great at that meme in terms of skills so in my opinion by like tier 10 you should have five engine accelerators and five rapid reloads it should just basically be a spamming machine and that would probably balance it out pretty well they're not exactly strong, but, you know, hey, if you give them a little bit more of a niche inside their meme bubble, they'd be even more fun and more reason to go up. Something, uh, you know, kind of an oddball pick, if you want to say. So, highly would suggest that, but overall, good event. Tiger event was great. Free. Perfect. I like it. I like it. Multiple blitz challenges along with it. Kept people fo forcing them to do different things because you had different styles you had to play. Not exactly a huge fan of that, but good. It was good. And also not team oriented either. So you got the solo players as well. So Tiger event, perfect. I like it. Lunar New Year, it was a lot of grinding. Uh, unfortunately, the rewards were kind of blah. I uh, wish that was a little better, but you know, I'm, uh, hey, it was decent overall. <laughs> but Italian Battleship early release event uh, was a nice discount. Uh, discounts should generally, in my opinion, be for premium ships, not tech tree line ships. Uh, and the time involved in the grind was bad. It was. So you need to value players' time better, in my opinion. It took more time to grind the ship during the event than to just wait till release and grind it then. And this is a FOMO event. This is to get people on, get people excited. Hey, in about a few weeks, it's going to be available. So grind out, get that ship. So it should be at least equal to the grind, not overly equal to that grind. Uh, you know, if I can grind for a tier six and 50 battles, but you're telling me to play 100 battles during this event, it's not really rewarding. So just think of that a little better. I do believe it wasn't bad overall, like hard, hard bad. But in the future, it's going to, correct those up a little bit oh i hated the writing this section i hated writing this section let's do it let's do it okay now let's talk about some drama i might be stepping on some toes here but i'm gonna do it so we lost a few cc's this year some from 4-4 yeah boy others from their own reasons their own issues or some events that occurred and two from both sides handling the issue poorly now, I'm going to briefly mention those two, but I'm also going to move on and talk about ways that we can improve later on to prevent the issues from happening again, and also maybe better ways to handle the situations that occurred. So we lost Yukikaze and Rappler. They did their things, Wargaming did their things, and of course, they broke up that... that relationship which happens it does this this relationship needs to be a cooperation it's a mutually beneficial situation and once it's not beneficial to both sides then yeah it's no longer a valid deal it's no longer a valid relationship so it happens but in my opinion i think that things have improved since then but at the same time i do believe that this is something that still needs to be worked on to prevent from happening in the future on leakers and data miners Wargaming, you need to get better. And I think what you need to do is look at other games of how they handle leakers and data miners. Call of Duty basically hands the information over to leaker and data miners and slightly confirms some things that they find themselves. Warframe decimated their entire leaker community. Decimated it. You don't know why? They started using them. They started going, hey, look. They found this. Cool. Awesome. Let's release early and get people hyped. The community of leakers and data miners typically are in two groups. One group that just wants to know everything and the other group that wants to actually just do it because 
they love just causing you troubles. They're bullies in ways. They are. But the more resistance you put up, the worse they are. So figure out ways to work with them. Use them to excite the community. You'd be surprised on what you can do when all of a sudden you're like, oh, hey, you found this? Awesome. Yeah, this that ship, it's probably going to be coming about next month. And just let people know about that. And all of a sudden goes, hey, cool, that ship's coming next month. And then, of course, a few days before, hey, the ship's coming in a few days. Use them. Reverse that logic on them. You'd be surprised on how powerful of a move that is on a lot of leakers and data miners that are there to particularly hurt you. So that's what I would suggest. Now let's talk about the CC program in general. Benefits have gotten better with, you know, coming to us with milestone rewards, which is great. We can give on ships for different milestones of subscribers, but the CC program really only gives the press account. I think of maybe two times I've actually learned about things from Wargaming prior to the community telling me. Not leakers, just the community. That's not really where it should be at. The I know it's getting better, but we need to try to get CCs to the forefront like other games. Use us, work with us, give us information so that we can actually have content ready for events that people might be interested in. This isn't a trade. This is a cooperation between us. I feel it's getting better, but just like any other relationship, we need to keep on working together to help this community grow again. And I, I really do believe we can do that. I think that if we get prior knowledge of some things, we can work with you by releasing content for, for say, let's say you're doing a deal on American ships this week. Well, we can do a bunch of videos on American ships to tell people how we feel about it. Say, hey, get this one, or don't get this one, or, you know, hey, if you like this style, get it. Use us. We are your hype machines. And if you don't include us in your at least a two week strategy or even three week strategy, like, we can't help you. Because some of us, it's we're batch, you know, making videos. We're making videos every few days. It's incredibly hard to just drop what we're doing. Because, of course, we only have a few thousand, you know, we actually, some of us don't even have a thousand sub. It's just, we don't make money off this. This is just all of our fun time that, hey, we want to add in. So, why not work with us just a little bit better? And I'll even say, like this video. I will be sending you this Wargaming a week or so in advance. And the community, are they going to be able to cut or prevent anything from release? No. I'm doing this out of professional courtesy. I want them to be able to respond to this video, have a very nice, long response to the video, or even just to the community in general, to say, yeah, hey, we know this stuff is up. I can't exactly say what, but I can tell you that there is a certain post that happened in Discord that they were like, hey, tell us how we're doing. I like that. That's awesome. Because sometimes you need to know the truth, the hard truth. And I thought it'd be better to just air out the community's grievances in one video, or maybe some other CCs will make another video as well. I'm looking forward to seeing those as well, see which areas I miss, which where which areas did I hit a little too hard on maybe, <laughs> events. But this relationship is beneficial. And I'm hoping we can, along with even other CCs, we can work together and make things happen for this game. I truly do. I truly do. I do believe we can make this CC program really benefit the community and us CCs along with growing the community. So, oh, okay, sorry, that was a long one. <laughs> but let's get back, let's get back to it. Warhammer 2 event, happened, some decent ships, not bad, kind of interesting. You know, maybe, not for me, but some people really enjoyed them. Grand Battles, this was actually the second one, but with higher tiers, so it was actually better in my opinion, but this really shows one of two things need to happen. Custom maps need to come for Grand Battles, which I think is a lot of effort. <laughs> At least from a developer side, I can feel it's, it's just like a lot of effort in that one. Or just, especially for Tier 6, 7, 8, put them in Tier 10 matches. It's typically they already feel at Tier 10, with only 7 Tier 10s, they already feel pretty big. So I think that maybe you don't need to stretch them out and just use what you have already. For the tier 10s, I think that you should just make a chaos and shove them all on one tier 10 match. Uh, <laughs> uh, come on, we all would enjoy it. 
Also with grand battles, there's one other fix that I think should be done. Better rewards for your time invested. If it takes two times to play a game, it should be 2x reward, if not a little more. So I highly suggest kind of adjusting the rewards, but I have a suggestion later on for that. Update 5.1. Good. Can't complain. Went off without a hitch. Good buffs. Ner- you know, the buffs and nerfs, along with the ships added in, great. I don't see. I don't think I see a problem. Defender of the Fatherland event got canceled. Uh, you can't fix that, Wargaming. I understand. That's just it's, just, it's unfortunate bad luck. You know, the world keeps on going into a spiral since Harambe died. Rest in peace. So, the death of world chat, in my opinion, that needs to come back. That really does need to come back and at least bring it back in platoon chat, fleet chat. Just make those two come back if you can. Even if it's just a small little update to bring it back, that would fix a lot of the community's issues right now. I know a lot of people are saying, bring back world chat. I understand that that's not really your decision. Uh, Wargaming in Germany <laughs> it's managing this game. But uh, yeah, at least try to try to see if you can bring something back especially platoon chat, just so we can ask what tiers instead of using Discord. I have enjoyed the increase of players on Discord and people using my Discord. At the same time, I understand that a lot of people just want to be able to use one app to play the game and enjoy it. So try to at least bring back platoon chat or gaming. So, oh, Dur7 province intro. Only only slightly OP in my opinion. <laughs> uh the event kind of failed on launch for me when I saw the eight medals and no medal bundles or medal bundles at the end, if I can speak. Sorry if we keep on beating a dead horse on this, but uh, yeah, trying to make that happen. I really, I really do feel like that would be awesome and a great addition to the game. Italian DD for free. Awesome. I don't even remember which one it is, but that's awesome. Free ships are free ships. I'm not going to argue with that. And I think that a lot of older premiums could come back in that way to you know, bring them back. I, I know a lot of older players would be like, oh, darn, I have it. But they'd also go, hey, yeah, but a lot of people might not. So that's great for them. St. Patty's Day event, uh, 100 wins only. We need more to events. Come on, come on. 100 wins is boring. Be better. I want you to be better. I really do. Whole reason for this video is just to try to help you and realize that the community really wants this. I'm not the only one. I've heard this plenty of times. 100 victories is just boring. So, but there's one good thing about this event. In my opinion, Belfast, Vanguard, and Cossack all in the shop. Perfect. Options. Love it. Keep it up. Uh, and if you also need more options, just slap in some old premiums that you have. You have some, you, we have premiums from four years ago now. Just use them. You're not making money off them. British CVs. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we all remember that month. So they were a little, uh, little imbalanced. Let's uh, write down a uh, tighten up balancing before release. Might, might be helpful in the future. Elbing line intro, uh, reward tree. I think this is great. You can unlock the tier seven early. That way you didn't have to play the tech tree line. You can just skip with all the other ships. Perfect. The others were in, were in crates. I'm okay with that. I'm, I, I think that's perfectly fine. Uh, you know, especially for the intro lines, especially when they're a split line. I think definitely the event should all be about, hey, now you don't have to play this one ship. You can play whatever ship you want and just start getting to the grind immediately. So great idea on that. German CV's Blitz Pass uh, should have been one in the free route in the freemium area. The tier four, maybe? Yeah, that would have been, that would have been great. You know, now having the uh, tier 10 in the press account, uh, it's, it's really fun and I'm not a CV main and I don't like how this is going, but I'm going to keep on moving before I accidentally... Say that I'm actually gonna grind it. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Constellation intro, crate only intro. In my opinion, this is fine. This would be fine even more if you make regular events focused towards players like I've been suggesting and going to suggest. If we just get it where regular players go, hey, this is this is the event for the whales. It's fine, whatever. That's fine. As long as when the events happen, it's for the players. You know, it's for the core player base that maybe aren't spending so much money or don't have the money that whales typically do for games. So just, this is good, but fix the other things and then create events won't be such a drag, in my opinion. 
Easter. Uh, we had to get lucky to get a ship or spend money on ships that were years old. The biggest problem, in my opinion, was uh, the rewards. This it was an okay event, but if it was it, or if they were newer ships, I would have loved it a lot more, in my opinion. You're probably not making much off of old ships, so use the old ships to win respect with the community. In my opinion, I think that'd be great. Multi-tier respawn, I think we should probably get that done to single-tier respawn. Sorry, it's just... It kind of sucks when you're grinding multi-tier respawn and you're constantly getting up-tiered and such, so I'd highly suggest not doing that. Buying tokens... Token bundles, keep it up, keep it up, make it happen more, okay? Unfortunately, we had the King George V and Ark Royale as this, you know, as the rewards, but, uh, you know, fine, whatever, but maybe next time, better options. Okay, Marco Polo, Tier 9 Roma. Cool, all right, whatever. Where's the Blitz Challenge? Sorry, I'm really getting into this. Am I beating a dead horse? I probably am beating a dead horse. Let's keep on going. But an event where you get 10 medals, and two keys for 60 wins, and then one key a day with 6% for one medal, 5 for 0.11%, 10 for 0.06%, and 20 for 0.01%, and the ship was being for 30 medals, and there was no medal bottles. Why would I even try Wargaming? Why? You have to make it at least look like I have a chance. Or that I'm going to get a good discount. I literally saw the Marco Polo event and all I saw was credits from the medals. Cool. Events for players. To convert players into paying customers. I swear, I'm I'm sorry. I'm beating this into submission here. Let's keep on going. We got two, two last ones. Actually, two last good ones. Commander Crate. Finally. Yes. Perfect. This was great. This was great. It kind of sucked when you got a previous one that you already had. But overall, I liked it. It was good. I liked the idea. Bring it space camos. Napoli. Free crate key in a Blitz Challenge. Make that a, always a thing with an ultimate crate key with a new ship. Just make that standard. That's a really great way to get players playing even during a crate event. So highly, highly suggest that. That's great. So where does this overall lead us? I know there's a lot. There's a lot of topics. Some good, some great, some we really don't want to talk about. But overall, all this considered, this is better than last year's prospect this time around. Really, 4-4 fractured the player base. It did. But right now, you have things going for you, Wargaming. We are rooting for you. You have been on the up and up generally for the last almost six, seven months. Now, we might not always have the best suggestions, I'll admit that, but we are telling you this because you have a great foundation of a game. The game loop is perfect for so many lifestyles. On a bus, play a game. In between meetings, play a game. Want to sit down and grind? Play a bunch of games. Some are rewarding, some probably not. Use that base and expand on it. Like, we want this game to be better. We really do. And in my opinion, I know there's a lot of people with doom and gloom on their eyes right now in the gaming community. But overall, to me, I think that they're looking at this and forgetting where we've been and where we've come from. Yeah, summer's coming. We're going to lose some players. That happens with every single game. But now's the time you have your core base playing. Use us to test weird stuff. Try out different things. Do that quality of life update that Bella talked about. I wanted to go over that more, but to me, it's you really are in a better place than last year, Wargaming. And I'm looking forward to the future. I really am. I'm going off script right here. So, but let's kind of go over a few more things to kind of back up that claim of everything's getting better. Ship balancing is better than last year. Definitely. Definitely. Did we have some rough times? Absolutely. Were they fixed? Absolutely. Blitz Pass is getting a tad boring, but that's not exactly a bad thing either. Some months, you know, hey. It's just a dependent on the ship. Do you want the ship or do you not want the ship? That's fine. I understand. And also, it's probably a good just, hey, sometimes, some some months you're going to give us something a little better than others. Probably fine. But I do wish you added a little bit of variance of, let's say one month was more about credits, one month more about gold, 
one month was about something else, kind of give us a little variation on that. Give it a little, uh, a little flavor. So overall, though, Blitz Pass is still a good deal. It really is. So staff is better, live streaming more, communicating more. Last year, it felt like it was basically none. And now it's actually a ton. We're constantly seeing communication between CCs and the uh, community managers, and then also the, the community managers in the community. So that's great. Um, also, once again, quality of life post from Bella and like that, talking about that stuff, trying to get these quality of life additions. This is summertime. Fix the game so that once everyone gets back from summer break and going on trips or, you know, dealing with the summer heat and staying outside as much as, or staying inside as much as they want to, either way, but <laughs> coming back to all of a sudden a game that's got a lot of nice improvements, perfect. I really can't wait to see what else the team brings this year. Really can't. I think that I, I'm in a positive net direction right now. It's barely positive to me, but it's positive nonetheless, and trust me, there's a lot of other games that you're doing a lot better of, and those things are AAA. So, the amount of ship lines coming out recently is great. It's fun for the entire community. Keep it up, but pace yourself. Don't burn yourself out too quickly. We are enjoying it, but don't, you know, run through your content a little too quickly. The bad part of the overall, events are reverting back to bad. They were really good in the October to January, going on February, a little bit of March area. Bring those back. Get players to get over that 50 to 60 in medals via playing and sell them bundles. And with that, there are certain players that are just against crates. Have multiple options to sell a ship to a player and make them feel rewarded for playing for a good bit to get a nice discount on a ship that they want. Whales will whale. How it works, you know, community knows. <laughs> okay, but events, they're for creating a FOMO, they're for creating a discount. Once that discount's over, you miss the event. It's done. Now you have to either pay full price or wait months for another discount. So stop killing our wants for an event by showing us it won't happen the moment that it starts. It's just not fun. Let's get into some suggestions because we have to end on a positive note because in my opinion, once again, you're doing a great thing. The community, I think, is just forgetting how bad it's been and how good it's gotten. But of course, we still want it to be better. So suggestions, camo every week. New camo for old ships. I think there are plenty of ships in this game that need camos. Camos are pretty easy to add in and, you know, offer a way to get older players. Maybe going back to an older ship, finding some new love. So, why not? You know, throw up in the specials area for a little discount or something like that. Get people playing some different ships by offering their historical camos for a little, 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 little less money. Just kind of uh, give a little spice to the air. More space camos and ways to get the ones you want. Uh, some of them have been out for years. So uh, give us a way to get them directly for certain ships that we want. Just like the Commander Crate, I think there should be a Space Camo Crate eventually. Or, of course, bring Ace back and give more options to that. We are in an arcade game, so use that. Create some weird camos. Come on. We like we love playing our ships the way we want to and in the weirdest way possible. If, if you want to spread more 40k love, make more skins for our ships. We There's probably a lot of players that would really thoroughly enjoy that. It's an arcadey game. I don't see why you don't use it. Uh, or at least I suggest you use it. Victory Blitz and Blitz Challenges always at the same time. For events, especially for a new ship, metal event, everything like that, they should always be there. They always make you feel like you're moving forward and it's critical to that feeling of, hey, if I keep on going and keep, you know, I, you know, hey, I didn't win this game, but when I did, I did some damage that counted towards the Blitz Challenge. You're constantly working on something and moving up two trees at the same time. People enjoy that. It keeps, it keeps players engaged. But beating it at a horse again, events, you know, 40% of the medals should come from the Victory Blitz, 15 to 25% from the Blitz Challenge, the medal totals. And it prevents us from going, we need to get 60 plus percent medals to get a ship from a crate. Which defeats us immediately. No one cares about a ship if they have to spend a bunch of money on gambling. So at least offer us, get us over that 50% mark. Really, I, I have a feeling that you would actually get a lot more money from players that you would least expect. Because they're actually like, hey, I can play and I can get this ship. Why not? Give them a, give a, especially when a lot of those players are your long-term players they're your core base so sometimes treat us to a reward just a few times you know 
I know you have to give a lot of new things to new players and whales. I do. I get it. But sometimes, remember, throw us a bone. So token bundles, of course, at the end, especially for those who prevent, uh, you know, just can't get the last few. It sucks. It's the worst feeling. So it makes me not want to do crates ever again. But overall, I will say crates are fine. I think about, you know, I think about you giving us the crate key, especially with the Napoli event every time we're doing that. That's fun. That's great. Hey, it gives us a, a reason to, hey, we're playing already. Might as well get it, right? So whales will hit the crate no matter what you want. And uh, we'll have a chance at a free ship. Just one little one. So, hey, throw us a bone once again. But Sonar Sweep should not introduce a new ship. Old ship? Why not? I don't see why not. Maybe a ship that only came out in a bundle or only came out in a crate. That's fine. But a brand new ship, it, it comes off poorly, in my opinion. I think it's a very old mechanic in the game, and I think we can you can definitely keep it, but just don't bring it out for new stuff. I just I really wouldn't suggest it. Ship balancing is handled like a live service, but live services typically update the game every few weeks or every week. At the rate you're upgrading the game... Unfortunately, there's a lot of ships that will remain in very poor shape for a long time. And I don't think any of us want that. You should want a lot of ships to be playable so that people can play this ship, you know, the, this game, World of Warships Blitz, however they want. And that's not a bad thing. That isn't. So, you know, take even some older ships. They need some love, too. I think there's a few ships that they are definitely underperforming, in my opinion. I've never seen them do good. Give them some love. Give some reasons for new players to go up it. Because, of course, all of us veterans have told the, those players, don't go up them. They, they suck. But we went up them when they were kind of good, you know? So don't forget about all of your ships in the game, not just the newer ships. So, and also, remember, more buffs, less nerfs, if I can talk. But modes in this game, they need a second pass. Blitz Royale coming back was great. And winning should literally net you something like 2,000 XP booster or something. Or maybe even just set a mountain free XP or anything like that. We need to feel rewarded for taking time out of our day and playing a particular mode. So with that, in my opinion, I think Grand Battles should be focused on something. Respawn is, of course, focused on grinding, but Grand Battles could be focused on giving blueprints and credits. Blitz Royale could be focused on free XP and maybe boosters or something like that, because then we have the regular game that kind of does everything. So give us a reason to come back to those modes and make them rewarding for different reasons. A lot of games have that capability, and I think that we can add that via the different modes in this game pretty easily. And, I, you know, of course, these are just ideas. Do what you want. But I do believe that each one should kind of have different focuses on them to uh, give, you know, for say, like players like me and also younger players to play them instead of going, oh, that's just a random match with that's slightly different and doesn't offer the same amount of rewards for my time. So, yep. Lastly, <sighs> summertime uses time to reward the players that are continually playing right now. This is your core base. Everyone that keeps on playing during the summer, minus a few new players or people who are, of course, out of school, a lot of them are your core player base. Talk to us. You are communicating more, which is great, but you have that group that literally says, hey, this game's worth enough for us to spend months of game time on or thousands of battles in. Also, maybe use this time to uh, upgrade the game a little bit. Work on better graphics move to PC, work on game balance, revisit old ship lines. This is the time that not too many people play, and you don't need to keep people playing during that time. Everyone just kind of understands the summer slump happens. So why not use this time, work on the fundamentals, and when everyone returns in the fall, well, now you have a brand new game to come back to. People will be excited for that. That's all of my notes. I know the community might have more to say to you down in the comments below. And anyone posting down below, please stay constructive. Add in anything I missed or didn't touch enough on. Let me know if I did this justice and described the issues over the past year well enough. Please use this video's comment section to lay down all of it on the line. I do believe this, is, this could be helpful for the community, be cathartic even, and also it will let Wargaming kind of know, hey, 
this is what one CC is saying. Let's see what other CCs are saying. Let's see the community is saying, and let's improve. And that's important. That is. Being a jerk won't win anyone over or change anything, so please, once again, stay constructive. We all love this game one way or another. We're all playing it for some reason. So let's see if we can make it better. But Wargaming, you are in better shape than last year. Things were not looking good last year. Now, things are looking pretty good. Things are. So use that momentum. Don't be sloppy. I hope you realize your game has a great foundational loop to it. Use it. It's why the community loves this game so much. It's why we see so much potential and don't want it squandered. This video is for you. That is all. Slide 47 out.